This summer I have taken a few films on Coinet cameras. Now Coinet were an English maker from about the 1930s until the early 60s and they were based in Birmingham and they basically made sort of happy snappy cameras. This one dates from about 1958-59 and it's a Coinet Rapier 2. The Rapier 1 has um, less features on I think. Um, and there's lots of things that I was drawn to by this camera. It is a plastic camera and but it's a 120 so that's medium format. We have um, to open the camera we open down here and when we open the camera I've just have exposed a film this afternoon in which I'm about to develop. Here we have our aperture which is 4x4 four four instead of 6x6. Six six. wonder where I've seen that before. And to get the film in and out we have a nice little um, tilting sprocket support hit there, film support, not film support, um, spool support. Now both these features I've seen in other cameras. Now I've probably spoken of the Diana camera before made in Hong Kong, one of my first cameras ever. I, my granny gave me one and it's become a bit of a cult camera. I always thought that was highly influenced by the Agfa isolate type of camera. Was this influenced by isolate? Or is this the camera that influenced Diana? Because if you look at it, you've got a blue top, a plastic base. Some of the features here very similar. So we load the film. Now we've got a couple of sophisticated pieces of extra feature on this camera. We do have a shoe for flash. We have two shutter speeds. We have a 50th of a second and we have a hundredth of a second. It's a spring shutter. So we can take multiple exposures on here. Reminds me a little bit of a holder camera as well, the Russian. Now the other gimmick, we're well not gimmick, we've also got black and white or colour. Now I think that would be the aperture, a change in the aperture. Let me have a look. Black and white looks very small like f22 where colour looks more like a f11. I've basically had it on black and white this afternoon but I'm now wondering if that was a step too far. There's no focusing on this camera. It's basically you decide whether what aperture you're going to have and what shutter speed you are going to have and you view and you click. The viewfinder is lovely, nice and bright. You wind onto number one, click number two and that is it. Let's see if the film came out. I had no idea if this camera was going to work. Well, I was pessimistic because of my experience with the old Diana camera, but this camera proved itself to be moderately good. Um, it was for a fixed lens. I was really pleased with how sharp these are. You can actually read the road titles in some cases. You can see even the bricks. You can see some of the lettering. I did enhance the contrast slightly, but I, it just shows you how sometimes a fixed lens, bright sun helps, I don't think I had this on the smallest aperture as I said, I think I had it on um, colour and I think black and white was a smaller aperture which would have been perhaps a little bit better but however the camera proved to be usable. I think having it on a hundredth of a second was another quite good thing because I think on the slower shutter speed I might have suffered quite a lot from camera sake. And it's not the highest quality camera in the world, but we are talking of its lens. And for a camera of its type here, of folding shirts, we can actually almost read the time on the clock. 
And remember, the negative isn't 6 by 6 it's basically 4 by 4 We get up to 16 on a film. I haven't shown all 16 here. Well, I've got 15, and they were all moderately usable. So it just shows you how a camera can surprise you. I enjoyed using this coronet. It was far better than I expected for a plastic 1950s British camera. If you see one, it might surprise you as well. Thank you for watching, uh, and bye for now.